Hey everyone, Connie here, and I didn't want to talk about this. I, I actually kind of wanted to avoid this issue, but I, I feel like things have gotten to a point where it's become kind of a mainstream, uh, well, topic of discussion within the fandom communities. Um, so, as you may have heard, I, I'm sure if you are on social media and you are involved in anime or the Ruby fandom or anything like that, you'll have heard about Vic Mignogna. Vic Mignogna has been recently accused of uh, sexual assault, unwanted advances on minors, and various other things. And there's a couple reasons why I didn't want to address this topic, why I wanted to kind of avoid this. Um, I think perhaps the biggest one is because of a previous example of this. Vic Mignogna in the past has been accused of these very things, and the accusations in the past were actually thrown out due to being proven false. Uh, there was a time, for example, Vic Mignogna was not allowed to be a guest at Yomacon, a convention here in Detroit, Michigan, that I frequent every year. He was actually barred from the convention. But, after the accusations against him at that time were proven false, he was allowed to return. And I have since met him uh, twice at two different uh, years during Yomacon and gotten pictures with him during both, One once uh, with Todd Haberkorn as well. And because of that, I've been a little weary on this entire argument against him, because he has been falsely accused of this before, but I've seen the photos and whatnot that show him doing this kind of stuff. that show him uh, hugging and kissing these underage girls. And sometimes there, even, even the people speaking out against him have admitted there have been some cases where th these fans have asked him for this. But there have also been cases where this has just happened. And you can see in some of those photos, if, you, if you've seen them, these girls have looked very uncomfortable. And I think another reason that I've always wanted to believe him is honestly because I don't, I don't like believing that Christians can do this kind of stuff. I, I really don't want to believe that, being a Christian myself. But it's like Christians have done this kind of stuff a lot. It's absolutely terrible, but it's true. And it's just, it, it's, it, I don't want to believe it, but I, I know it's true. And another reason I, I've been trying to avoid this is more personal. Something I, I haven't talked about before. Something that I've actually very much kept hidden. And, and I, I've been afraid to admit to. But in this time of the Me Too movement, I, I feel it's, it's time I do talk about it. it. I feel I need to. I have been sexually assaulted. Twice. The first time was actually before I even came out as trans. It was at Yomacon, I, I want to say in either 2015 or 2016, I try to repress the memory so much. And, and it wasn't, and the thing is, it wasn't like this big, violent thing either, which almost kind of makes it feel worse. It was, it was during the night at the convention, you know, the late night panels and stuff. I was, at the time, walking around getting uh, some pictures of the straggling cosplayers still around. I went into the restroom and there was someone else already in there using the urinal. Because, again, at the time, it was before I came out as trans, I was using the men's restroom. He changed urinals to get closer to me and, without warning, grabbed me. 
and, and naturally, of course, I freaked out. I jerked away from him. I, I, I pulled up my pants and I booked it. And I could, I could not tell you to this day what he looks like or who he was or anything. I, I don't even, I, I again, I've tried to purge it from my memory so hard, I don't even remember if he was cosplaying or not. All I remember is that I felt so horrible in that moment. And I had no, I had a couple other panels I was planning on going to, but nothing else big that I had to do. Like I, I didn't have any big uh, staffing related stuff I had to do. I didn't have any more shifts or anything. At that point, I pretty much just found some place to sit. And for a bit, I cried. And then I just kind of just waited to the, till the time I was supposed to meet my friend to come home. And I hid it. I, I didn't tell anyone. I, I, I didn't tell the people I worked with at the convention. I didn't tell my friend. I didn't tell anyone. Because I was afraid to. And, and again, I didn't know who this person was. Just some random person. He, he could have been drunk for all I know. I don't remember, but at the time, I was just so freaked out by it. I just wanted to ignore it. I just wanted to move on, and, and I wanted to enjoy as much as I could of the rest of the convention. The second time was after I had come out. And it was... It was almost worse. I was at a store. I was using the women's restroom because I use the women's restroom now. I have for quite a long time. I haven't used the men's restroom anywhere in a long time. I was using the women's restroom. I, I was using the stall. I came out, there was another woman there and she demanded she demanded to know why I was in there. I, I was wearing feminine clothing and she demanded to know why I was in there. I, I simply answered because I'm a girl and this is the girl's restroom and she grabbed me. And, and I was like clothed at that point. I was, it's not like I was peeing at that point like the first time, but she grabbed me and said, then what's this? And just like last time I jerked away and booked it. And this time I was with someone at the time, so I had to avoid breaking down. I had, I had to try my hardest not to cry again. And, and I hit it again. And this was like, this was like, like last fall. And I, I was I was out with friends, and I had to avoid breaking. Down. I didn't want them to know. I, I I think one of the biggest reasons why I, I hid it for so long is because of my non-confrontational uh, mindset. I've always been non-confrontational. I hate starting things. I hate I, I I hate confronting people about things. If, if I'm feeling uncomfortable, a lot of the times I just let it go. I just I just sit there in my uncomfortability because I don't like confronting people. It, it it it's so uncomfortable for me to do, and I think that's again why I hid it at that point. Why I avoided talking about it. Why when this Me Too stuff was it, it has been so big lately, I never came forward about it and said it as well. Even in this era where people have been getting punished because of it, I've still been afraid. And because of this, I, I have this... I mean, I can't help but want to support these victims. To believe them. To be, to side with them. But I've met Vic, and he's such a good person. 
but someone I don't remember exactly who it was, but someone one of the another voice actor said on Twitter that you can see someone and not truly see them. And that that I think is the biggest reason why I, I've tried to avoid speaking about this because the feeling of no, of having met someone and seeing such good in them and finding out something like this it terrifies me and I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe that people can be that two-sided. Despite again knowing they can. I met Vic, he was so nice. He was so caring, so likable. He was one of the nicest people I've ever met in, in terms of guests at conventions. When, I, when I've asked him for pictures, he was so excited. When the first time I met him, I asked if we could do the picture back to back with like our arms crossed. He was, he was like so excited about it and so happy and it was like, it was so fun and cool and it's like, the idea that he could be like this just, I, I don't want to believe that. So I've been avoiding talking about this because of these kinds of reasons. Because I've not known what to believe. Because, and here's the thing, these accusations could be false. But they have to be taken seriously. Having been through this shit, I, having not been able, not being courageous enough to speak up about it, I understand that, th that these victims need to be taken seriously and need to be believed. So, even though I, I don't want to believe it, I have to side with them here. I have to. Even just recently, too, I've almost kind of defended Vic. When Rooster Teeth announced they were firing him, I went on this entire spiel about how it was a terrible idea because they essentially would kill off their character with Uncle Crow. And don't get me wrong, I believe that because I do believe that an animated character is their voice. That the voice actors, more than the writers or anything else, give life to these characters. I firmly believe that. And I firmly believe that trying to hire someone else will hurt the character, but also that killing him off would also hurt his character at this point. But at the same time, I can't I can't say it's not the right decision. Rooster Teeth is in the right to fire him. I'm just upset that it's going to hurt the character. And it will, but it's not Rooster Teeth's fault. If it's anyone's, the only person you can really blame for this is Vic. And I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to admit that, but I have to. I have to side with these victims. It's, I mean, even on top of just having been there, you, you it's just the right thing to do. You have to, you have to believe and support these victims. And again, if it is false and if Vic is proven innocent, then we move on. But until then, I have to I have to side with those who are put out because of this. And again, I've seen the pictures. I don't want to believe it, but I've seen the pictures. And you could tell these girls were uncomfortable. So yeah, I really didn't want to have to weigh in on this. I, I wanted to just, to just not, to just continue on doing my own thing. But honestly, I, I'm in the process of uploading Loud House now, and it was brought up to me again, and I kind of just broke down because I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't just pretend to not have a thought, have thoughts on this, have an opinion on this. I could not just pretend 
to be neutral on this or to just hide my opinion. I've talked to you guys about it before, but I truly believe in speaking out for your beliefs. And I truly believe that honesty is not just saying what's true, that it's being open about your feelings, about your thoughts. It's speaking the truth when you don't have to. That is what I truly believe honesty co it covers, what it encapsulates. And I, I can't... I, I can't do this anymore. I, I talk about that all... I've talked about that all the time. And I've hidden such a big thing for so long. For years in one case and months in another. And I've been vulnerable with you guys before. It's not like it, I, I'm not, it's not like I'm afraid to be vulnerable. And you guys, for those of you who are here, remember my live stream for Doki Doki Literature Club. Some of you might remember that when I had a breakdown on camera because the big moment in the game, uh, I mean, it's been out for a while, I'll just say it, Sayori's suicide. How it, how it caused me to break down because of my own past with suicide. My own attempts. How it freaked me out and, and caught me off guard in a way that really just hit me so hard, I just couldn't continue on. I've been vulnerable with you. I've told you so much stuff about me. I'm not afraid to, uh, uh, to be truthful about who I am and how I feel. But I've been afraid to be truthful about this one topic. And it's been eating away at me. So I can't do this anymore. I'm doing so, I'm doing my damnedest right now just to hold in tears. I'm trying so bad, but I need to be honest. I, I, I can't support Vic. I, I still acknowledge that he's an amazing voice actor, and he is. That can't be denied. And I won't deny that, but that... I always say that you have to separate the art from the artist. And it's especially true here. Just because he's an amazing voice actor doesn't mean he's necessarily an amazing person. And I have to support the... I have to support the victims. Even with him having apologized, owning up to mistakes and even with him having said he would he wouldn't hug or embrace or kiss anyone again and explaining that it was it, it's a thing cuz his family's always done it and he's always been raised like that and it's like even with his statement i, I can't support him but i'm i'm rambling so that's my statement on this. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for hiding a lot of this for so long. I hope you understand. And I hope we can just move on. So for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.